Our next speaker is very much like that woman in the field. She knows the sound of that creativity coming, and she's really good at running for the cabin. She's a willing host to the genius visitor, and she doesn't hesitate to answer the door, even when she's got a lot of work to do, her hands full, a baby on her hip, bills to pay, and a whole lot of laundry to do. As she'll share with you, she's at a place now in her life where she really sees this as her life's purpose. It's not simply an excuse to put down the hoe and take a break from the fields. Please join me in welcoming to the stage the unbelievably talented creative artist, Monique Barrett. Then she takes it day by day, cause that's all that she can do when she knows she'll find a way she can safely sail through and make it better. transition and um, at a time in my life where I was moving into a place that, that I, I needed to put myself in order to live the life that I envisioned. And, um, and it was hard and it took some time and, uh, and writing this song was my way of getting through it, my way of coping with it. And that's kind of what songwriting has, has always been for me. It's been a way for me to cope <laughs> with situations. When these songs come along, I'm just like, ah, great, okay, that's, that's going to help. Um, so that, that particular one has a, a special place in my heart because it kind of started me in a way onto the path that I'm on now toward becoming a professional musician. Um, but I chose it for two reasons. The other reason I chose it is because it's the first song that I've written that has allowed me to see how my music that I create can impact other people. I never really thought of it that way. I, like I said, I, I always just thought, oh, this is mine, and I kind of squirreled it away and you know, just thought of it as my way of, of dealing with things. Um, until I sang that song at a gig that I played a couple months ago, and a woman came up to me, and she was crying, and she hugged me, and I was like, oh, hello, stranger. Um, <laughs> writing that song, because that song helps me get out of bed every morning. And, uh, oop, oh, I said I wasn't going to do this, okay. <laughs> um, and at that moment, I, I realized, oh my god, okay, so this really can make a difference. And that was big for me for a couple of reasons. Um, I have always known I wanted my life's work to be something helping, that where I can help other people. I never saw music as that. I didn't see how, you know, traveling around and um, trying to to live your life that way could help, and she allowed me to see that. Um, so that was a really big eye-opening moment. Um, just so happens that same week I started reading a book called The Artist's Way that many of you are probably familiar with. And um, one of the basic premises in this book is that every one of us is born with something special, some creative talent, some gift that we're giving. giving. 
and giving. Um, and the idea in this book is that these are gifts from God. These are gifts from something bigger, something higher. And that when we choose to accept them, recognize them, and use them to put something back out into the world, um, that's our gift back to God. And when I read that, it totally struck a chord in me, no pun intended, um, that this, this is like, this is my way to not only be helping people, which is what I've always wanted to do, but it's my way to like, to get on God's nice list at the same time, because I'm doing something that God wants me to do. And it's clear to me now that God wants me to do this. I, I think of the times in my life, I kind of, I had this moment when I, when I realized that, and it was like in a movie when, you know in a movie when somebody has this, this moment of realization and it's like you hear the record player like, you know, and it stops and it zooms in on their eyeball and it goes past, you know, all these memories. You hear things people have said in the past and you see these scenes from your past or their past. That happened to me, basically. And, uh, and I went back over all these moments in my life that made it so abundantly clear to me that I am here to be a musician. Um, I had a vision of myself at seven years old sitting in a field by my house picking a blade of grass and figuring out that if you hold it just so between your thumbs and you blow, it makes a sound kind of similar to an oboe. It's this like, you know, like reedy sound. And uh, as soon as I realized it could make a sound and it could make a note, I wanted to see if it could make lots of notes. So I tried to make different notes on it. And before you knew it, I was playing the Star Spangled Banner on a blade of grass <laughs> at seven years old. And then I thought to the moment that I wrote my first song, and, um, and, you know, talk about these moments of, of great emotion, you know, where these songs come to me. The, my first song was written at 14 years old. It was my first true love. And I wrote a poem. And when I wrote the poem, I wrote it down. It was only four lines. I wrote it down, and when I read it back, it was a song. And I, I read it as a song. And that's the way I heard it. And I remember busting into my sister Jocelyn's room and being like, oh my god, so I just wrote this down. And now it sounds like this. And it went like this. It went, Labyrinth your wall. I breathe your scent. I breathe your A perfectly innocent love. I breathed somebody's breath. That is all I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my sister started bawling. And I was like, oh, God, I'm so sorry. And she said, no, I'm not crying because you made me sad. I'm crying because that was beautiful. And I'm proud of you. And, um, and it turns out that that's not, that's not the last time I'd make people cry. I get uh, pretty much every gig I play, I get somebody who's like, your music made me cry. And I used to, <laughs> I used to apologize all the time. You're like, I'm sorry, it's really not my intention. But, you know, I've been told that just the very sound of my voice, it, it <coughs> unlocks something in people. And, and I and have had people thank me because they'll say, you know what, I really needed to cry. I needed to feel what I felt. You didn't make me sad. You made me cry. And um, so that's a little different. So I can take some solace in knowing, you know, that that's another way that I know that what I'm doing is the right thing to be doing. So, um, so here, here we are, two months, pretty much, after I had these two big moments where I read this book and I had this nice lady tell me about, you know, getting out of bed in the morning and using my song. And um, if, if ever I needed proof that when you surrender, when you let yourself be what it is that you're here to be, um, if ever I needed proof that that was true, that you, I should do that, th these two months have proved that. Because in two months, I've written three complete songs. And to give you some some uh, comparison, I've written 10 songs in the last 15 years. <laughs> I've written three songs in two months. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> and 
not only have I written three complete songs, I have a notebook full of ideas. And I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have to run to a cabin and write them down. I have an iPhone with an app that I, <laughs> <laughs> that I can just be like, oh, okay, sing into. So, um, so yeah, and there's lots of things on there that I'm like, ooh, delete, you know. But, but that's where the ideas go until I can get them into a little better form. And um, so, oh, right, proof. I have these songs. I have gotten more opportunities to share my music than ever before. I have, I have gigs that I've had to turn down opportunities to play places. I have people contacting me and asking me to play at their venue, which is crazy. Um, <laughs> and I have um, I've been on the radio two times. I have, oh, my, I wrote a lullaby for my daughter, Eleanor, who's eight years old now. I wrote it when she was just a tiny, tiny baby. And um, somebody is putting together a compilation CD, a benefit CD for the Children's Hospital, and they're putting Ella's lullaby on it. And I'm like, it's amazing. It's amazing. Two months. This has happened in two months. And to top it all off, I'm here tonight. I'm here in the company of women who I have so much admiration for and so much respect for and who I feel just lucky to know, and and not just not just to know, but to be doing this with them, and to be telling you all about this. It's this is this is pretty much my definition of success. So the beauty of that is that I feel like a complete success, and I haven't even really started my music. <laughs> excuses why I couldn't do all this stuff and one of my excuses that I got shot down was well, I can't afford to record an album and then I found a sound engineer who's willing to record me in exchange for sushi and soup. <laughs> I was like, all right, I guess I can record an album. So I'm in the process of doing that right now. Um, but this, you know, really, this is the tip of the iceberg. This is, this is the very beginning. And I feel amazing. Um, like, this is success, and um, I forget how I was going to, I actually wrote a song to close it. I have one minute left, and I'm going to try to make this happen. Um, <laughs> I didn't bring my guitar, but I need your help. Does anybody, do you guys feel okay singing a little bit? Mm -hmm. We're in a church, yeah. we're in a little church, and I have all of these amazing people in front of me, and I just got to, I have to try this, at least. So I wrote this song about this whole process, and this song, it just, it happened, and um, the first two lines that I won't sing, it was, there's something I've been searching for my whole life long, and I thought perhaps I'd find it if I wrote a song about what it is I'm supposed to do. And then the second line was, it's time for me to listen to that inner voice. It's grown so loud, I feel I no longer have a choice um, about, about, about what it is I'm supposed to do. So then the chorus part, which is the part in the song that is like the big, you know, the big part, in my head, which is the only place this song has ever existed so far <laughs> before now, is um, there's actually a choir singing with it, and there's two parts. So if you guys would indulge me for a second. The first part, maybe from here over, could say this part, I'm gonna give you three notes. And if you don't feel like singing, maybe you could clap and hold the beat. So it's gonna go like this. And if you can sing and clap at the same time, even better. <laughs> Good for you.